A look outside the Beltway at New Orleans' famed French Quarter. The Senate returns from recess tomorrow with Republicans still hoping to keep their promise to repeal and replace Obamacare. But how realistic is that goal? Joining me now is Louisiana Senator and Dr. Bill Cassidy, who has his own health care plan. Senator, welcome back. Thank you. You were one of the few Republican senators or congressmen to hold an open town hall during this last recess, and you got an earful on health care. Let's take a look. I'll tell you what's rude, um, kicking 22 million people off their health care in this country. You know, you cannot afford it. You've worked at the, at the Earl K. Long Hospital for a long time. You know what people are like at their lowest. So to step on their necks by kicking them off their health care at this point, that's true, sir. Um, uh, strong message to follow. Uh, as you went around the state of Louisiana these last 10 days, how concerned our voters, how concerned our folks when they read, and obviously this fellow was aware of it, of the CBO report that, that tens of millions of people could lose their health insurance under the plans Republicans are putting forward. They're very concerned. You're hearing two different arguments. You're hearing first folks saying, listen, I'm paying $1,700 a month for insurance before Obamacare is paying 800 and I have $6,000 deductibles per family member. Uh, and are you have folks who with disabilities who are concerned they will lose their coverage for the disability that shows that health care is like no other issue it touches people in their most personal being we got to get it right and they're not happy with the current situation well people don't like change even from worse to better and there's been a lot of kind of promulgation of things which are not true about the health care bills that have gone up by the way I have reservations about the Senate bill but nonetheless some of that which is of concern does not need to be of concern. Well, let's talk about the plan, because you and Senator Collins, Republican Senator Collins of Maine, who has said at this point that she's against the bill, the, the Senate bill, the, your plan that you're putting forward, and here are some of the highlights. Keep most Obamacare taxes to pay for a replacement. Allow states to keep most of Obamacare if they want for states that want a new system. Auto-enroll people in insurance so they have to opt out not opt in. Senator, it's an interesting plan, but how many of your colleagues in the Senate, and particularly Republicans, have signed on to it? Uh, we have six of us total, more than any other plan out there. And by the way, I would say that is the only way we can go forward. But, but you, you need 50. Oh, we plus need the vice president. Oh, totally get that. But once, if, if the president logs in that this is the plan he wishes, or that the leadership says, okay, this is the plan we want, then there will be the plan that goes forward. Some people were going to sign on. They said, let's see what President Trump does. Let's first talk, Chris, though, about why they've had such a problem passing any plan. They're trying to combine tax reform with health care reform. We take care of that. We say, let's do health care reform first, and then address the tax situation when you do comprehensive um, uh, uh, comprehensive tax reform. Don't mix the two. We don't mix the two. Secondly, are we serious about keeping Donald Trump's campaign pledges that cover all, care for pre-existing conditions, eliminate the individual and employer mandate, and lower premiums? If we're serious about that, Cassidy Collins is the only way to get there. But, but here's the criticism that, that you hear, and quite frankly, I, I don't mean to be negative, but this is the reason it doesn't seem like Cassidy Collins is going anywhere is that if New York, what you're basically saying is it's a federal system, each state can decide what fits them. That is a good conservative federal argument. But if New York and if California decide that they're going to retain Obamacare with all of the benefits, most of Obamacare, with federal taxes, which is what your plan would do, conservative senators say in their states, which are going to do away with Obamacare, then the folks in their states are paying so New Yorkers can have bigger, better, richer health care coverage than they get. That is a misunderstanding of our bill. Every state gets an equivalent amount of money based upon their population and a couple other factors, cost of care, et cetera. So every state would get their fair share, if you will. New York and California would continue to get the share they want. Minus, by the way, the penalties on the individual and employer mandates. We repeal those mandates. So those states would have to reimpose individual and employer mandates. Frankly, I don't think they keep Obamacare. I think they go with our other option. All right. The hot idea right now uh, is Ted Cruz's plan that he is being offering under which uh, <clears throat> each exchange uh, an insurer would, could offer 
what are called skinny plans, cheaper plans with fewer benefits that people could buy, but as long as they offer one plan that has all the benefits under Obamacare. And the argument against that is that you're going to get healthy people, they're going to buy the cheaper plans with less coverage because they're healthy, and that means that the middle-income people who aren't covered by Medicaid, who have pre-existing conditions or serious problems, are going to have these expensive comprehensive plans they won't be able to afford. You basically have a two-class insurance system, and for the people who really need it, no insurance at all. Well, first, I'm all for, <clears throat> I'm all for people being able to choose the insurance plan that best suits their needs. We should absolutely do that. But you're right. If you sluice off the older and sicker in their own plan with their own risk pool, then you've just recreated the Obamacare exchanges where the federal taxpayer is putting billions in to subsidize the expense of a few. We need to have a common risk pool where everybody uh, chips in a little bit for that young person who gets in a car wreck, for example. If we do it, in that case, the Cruz Amendment's a good amendment. But as it now stands, Cruz is a non-starter for you. I don't know the amendment. I, if it turns out it's two plans. Well, that's what he's described. With No, that's okay. With two risk pools, then that's bad. Because but that's what he's described. No, he has not yet designated whether or not you have a single risk pool or two risk pools. If it is a single risk pool, that actually works. If it is two risk pools, that's just Obamacare recreated. Uh, and we need to do something different than Obamacare. At least 10 Republican senators have now said, have come out formally, you have not, although you've expressed doubts about it, have expressed doubts about the McConnell plan as it was offered the last week in June. Is that plan now dead? We don't know what the plan is. Well, uh, wait a minute. It was, it was submitted. Well, the draft plan has now been serious rewrite. And so we don't know what the serious rewrite. Uh, clearly, the draft plan is dead. Is the serious rewrite plan dead? I don't know. I've not seen the serious rewrite plan. <laughs> it's, it, it's a heck of a way to do business. It is a heck of a way to do business. By the way, I go back to Cassidy Collins. Nice thing about Cassidy right. Collins, the nice thing about Cassidy Collins, as you said, it's a conservative federalist approach, which actually gives the state's guidelines, gives every state their fair share, and allows them to come up with the answer for their state. It actually takes that decision making away from us, returning it to the patient and the state. That's where we should be. And then there is the idea that President Trump offered in a tweet a few days ago, and let's put this up on the screen, if Republican senators are unable to pass what they are working on now, they should immediately repeal and then replace at a later date. What do you think of that? Uh, Non-starter. I'll tell you, it'll be uncertainty in the insurance markets. Premiums will rise for middle-class families. It gives all the power to people who actually don't believe in President Trump's campaign pledges, who actually don't want to continue to cover and care for pre-existing conditions and to lower premiums. It gives them the stronger hand. I think it's wrong. I think it betrays President Trump's campaign pledges. So I come away from this, Senator, th thinking that, that repeal and replace is in real trouble. Uh, in the current pathway, it has been. And I know I sound like a broken record. We should go back to conservative principles where we devolve power to the states and to the patients, allowing them to make the patients the, the best decision for them. But I guess what I'm asking you is, if you look at a rewritten, and I understand you haven't seen it all, but as what you've heard about, I mean, it, there's nobody who's more clued in on this than you are in the Senate. If you look at what uh, McConnell is talking about, look at what Cruz is talking about, Forget Kennedy, uh, Ca uh, Cassidy, Collins for a moment. How much trouble is repeal and replace in? Uh, if you're only talking about the draft plan, clearly it's not going to pass. Ten senators have said they would not vote for it. On the other hand, every time they come up with an iteration that becomes more conservative in the sense of giving power back to states, we move a little bit closer to passage. So if we continue in that pathway, I do think we come up with both a bill that passes and one that fulfills President Trump's campaign plan. Does this get passed by the end of the month? I don't know that. You, you want to put odds on it? <laughs> uh, I would probably put that as 50-50. I do think we have to do something for market stabilization. Otherwise, people who are pre paying premiums of twenty, thirty, and forty thousand dollars will pay even that much more. So we have to do something to stabilize the market for those middle-class families currently kind of mm, groaning beneath Obamacare. Uh, but going forward, Obamacare just cannot. Our American people want more freedom to make the decision that matters to them and not have somebody in Washington, D.C. tell them what that decision should be. Obamacare tells them what that decision should be. It may take a while, but we will get to a point where that power goes back to the family, and that's where it should be. But it might not happen on this legislative calendar. 
It may not happen completely on this legislative calendar, but the process will begin. And as that process begins, it will be, it will be inevitable that it will eventually completely occur. Senator Cassidy, thank you. Thanks for coming in. It's always good to talk with you, sir. Thank you, Chris.